On my wedding day, Patton didn't attend the ceremony. He only sent a red envelope through a friend. I joked with a smile, we were both his ex-girlfriends, so why the favoritism? It was said that when Patton's first love got married, he not only prepared a generous gift but also attended the wedding in person. As the wedding was winding down, I looked up and saw a familiar figure flash by the VIP room on the second floor. My husband came over, put his arm around my shoulder, and said in a relaxed tone, The wedding is finally over. You have no idea how worried I was that Patton might come and crash it. I laughed. How could that be possible? Didn't you notice? He viewed our electronic wedding invitation 1,032 times. I paused, lowered my eyes, and said softly, it doesn't matter, none of that is important anymore. Dean! Wiss Novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. Trevor and I are a contract couple. We are of similar age, have similar experiences, have known each other for many years, and have a certain understanding of each other's character. And we both just happen to need to get married. So, we hit it off. On the night of the wedding, Trevor asked me if I wanted to have a married life. I blinked and smiled, I didn't get married to become a nun. He was very gentlemanly and cared about my experience. He turned off the light, we kissed, and at the last moment, he asked me, when you see me, do you think of Patton? After all, he and Patton were good friends before. I closed my eyes, hugged his shoulder, and asked him, when you see me, do you think of Amanda? I had never met Amanda, but Trevor had mentioned her before. His ex-girlfriend was very beautiful. Trevor fell silent. I thought I had brought up a painful memory for him and quickly apologized. Sorry, just pretend my question was never asked. Trevor patted my head and smiled, you don't need to apologize. He looked at me seriously and said, Holly, let's live well together from now on. For a lifetime. I nodded and agreed. After thinking for a while, I added, Let's both live well. But if one day you want a divorce, remember to tell me. The most important point in the prenuptial agreement between Trevor and me was honesty. Love is not a necessity for marriage, respect is. Having outgrown the age where love alone could sustain us, those so-called passionate romances seemed insignificant. I firmly believe that I deserve to live happily, even if there is no love in my marriage. My marriage to Trevor was more pleasant than I had imagined. He was a considerate man, always paying attention to my preferences, surprising me with little gifts from time to time, and handing over his monthly salary as soon as it came in. In these details, he was exactly like Patton. I didn't know whether to praise them for being such good friends or to commend their ex-girlfriends for teaching them so well. I accepted the transfer, kept a portion, and transferred the rest back to Trevor's phone. He looked at me, puzzled, what does this mean? After all, we're a contract couple, so I won't take control of our finances. Besides, you have your own circle of friends and often need to socialize. It would be inconvenient for you to ask me for money each time. I have a bank card that I don't use much. Let's just deposit a fixed amount into it each month for our daily expenses and social interactions. Trevor didn't say much, just nodded simply, all right. Occasionally, he would come home late from socializing, drunk and brought back by his colleagues, clinging to me like a koala. I would dutifully fulfill my role as a wife, helping him take off his shoes and clothes, wiping his face and body, and cooking hangover soup. He would cling to my hand, calling me over and over, honey, honey. His tone was full of affection. I would respond to him tirelessly, I'm here, I'm here. Because we didn't love each other, we had no conflicts. Those small moments of warmth and happiness bred another kind of emotion mixed with familial and friendly feelings. It wasn't love, but it felt more secure and satisfying than love. I didn't have to worry about whether my husband loved me or someone else, or whether the lipstick marks on him were intentional or accidental. When people stay away from love, their hearts become incredibly broad. The next day, Trevor woke up, briefly explained why he got drunk, and thanked me for taking care of him. I used to feel terrible the day after getting drunk, but today I just feel relaxed. He waved his arms and kicked his legs in amazement, his face full of admiration for me. Patton used to have a lot of drinking sessions, and he would feel awful the next day. I felt sorry for him, so I asked many people for advice on how to take care of a drunk. 
Trevor paused for two seconds, you really learned a lot for him. Not really. Didn't you also learn many caregiving skills for your girlfriend? I shrugged indifferently, actually, our current situation is like enjoying the shade of trees planted by others. Trevor enjoyed my care, and I enjoyed Trevor's consideration. But people aren't born knowing how to love, they learn different ways of getting along with different people in one relationship after another. Unfortunately, we often don't have the chance to make up for past regrets, even though we become better from lessons learned in failed relationships. Both Trevor and I carry deep impressions left by our exes. Trevor asked me, do you often think of Patton when you see me? I admitted frankly, indeed, some of your habits are exactly like his. For example, for example, handing over your salary, the goodbye kiss before work every day, and the occasional flower surprises. I smiled, your ex-girlfriends must have been girls who valued rituals. Trevor pursed his lips and didn't say anything. By the way, about the lipstick mark on your shirt last night. I said as I watched Trevor's expression. Just to clarify, I'm not questioning you. But we agreed before getting married not to hide our relationship statuses. I had made it clear that I didn't mind Trevor developing new relationships. My only requirement was honesty. After all, divorce is no small matter, involving two families, and I needed to be prepared. Don't overthink it. The lipstick mark was just an accident. Trevor rarely frowned at me, I'm completely innocent. He told me the whole story behind the lipstick mark, almost wanting to open his heart to me, afraid I might misunderstand. His expression was both anxious and worried. I didn't want to hear it anymore, but he kept explaining. In the end, I had to beg for mercy, all right, all right, I believe you, really. Before leaving, Trevor, as usual, cupped my face for a goodbye kiss. What should have been a brief, light kiss today carried a suppressed intensity. He bit my cheek lightly, from now on, I won't kiss you. You kiss me instead. His tone was uncharacteristically childish. I looked at him in surprise, recalled what I had said to him before, and understood. Although I no longer had feelings for Patton. He was still my ex and had left a deep mark on my life. In my marriage with Trevor, I shouldn't have mentioned him so casually. Trevor was very careful, he never brought up his ex-girlfriend. In this aspect, I was indeed wrong. So, I complied with Trevor's request, stood on my tiptoes, and gave him a heavy kiss on the lips, as an apology. I've discovered more and more differences between Trevor and Patton. So, I think about Patton less and less. Time flies, and Trevor and I have been married for a whole year. I knew Trevor would definitely prepare a surprise for me today, so I greeted my colleagues early in the morning, planning to leave work early. Feelings are mutual, I can feel Trevor's sincerity. He treats me well, so I treat him well in return. But I didn't expect Patton to be waiting for me at the company entrance. An ex should be like a dead person, so even though Patton and I had a complicated relationship, I never thought about meeting him again. After all, Putting myself in his shoes, I didn't want Patton to stay in touch with his first love back then, and surely Patton's current partner wouldn't want him to contact me either. Long time no see, Patton greeted me. I nodded but didn't stop walking. Are you in such a hurry to go back and celebrate your anniversary with Trevor? Patton asked with a smile. Yes, I nodded frankly, so I won't catch up with you. He didn't expect me to admit it so straightforwardly, a flash of embarrassment quickly crossed his smile, then it widened again. No hurry, I think Trevor won't have time to spend the festival with you today. Really? I didn't care about Patton's words. He stepped forward, blocking my way, stop right there. I sighed helplessly and stopped, Patton, what exactly do you want to say? Aren't you curious why Trevor doesn't have time to spend the anniversary with you today? Not curious. If he really stands me up, he'll explain it to me himself. Patton gritted his teeth, do you trust him that much? Yes, I trust him, just like I trusted you back then. I looked at Patton's instantly pale face, surprised that I didn't feel any satisfaction. No matter what reason Trevor has for standing me up, the hurt it would cause me wouldn't be greater than seeing you and your first love in bed together back then. Patton and I broke up on the eve of our wedding. The scene was very embarrassing at the time, but our breakup was always calm. I always knew Patton had a first love of 10 years, and I knew the reason they broke up wasn't because they fell out of love. 
It was because the girl's parents thought Patton's family background wasn't good enough, so they forced her to marry another rich second generation. Saying I didn't mind at all would be a lie, but I loved Patton, so I accepted all of this. Patton was indeed very good to me. All his password numbers were my birthday, he would pin my messages, and he prepared many ceremonial gestures for me. He was very busy with work, but since we started living together, he would try his best to pick me up and drop me off from work whenever he had time. He wasn't good at cooking, but the few dishes I liked, he had mastered them to perfection. He had so many good qualities, enough to make me, a naive person in love, fall head over heels into a sweet trap. Unable to recover. We were together for three years and never argued. Even if we occasionally had disagreements, we could sit down and talk calmly. I used to think it was just his personality. How lucky I was to find such a good man. Later, I realized that the reason he did so well and was so perfect was simply because he didn't love me. The essence of love is actually ugly and blind, it makes you go crazy, get jealous, and feel envious. It makes you irrational and unreasonable. But Patton never did. He was always patient, always tolerant. And always kept me at an unreachable distance. The first time I felt I saw the real Patton was on the day his first love divorced. Patton came home late from work, and his mood was low the entire evening. I thought he had encountered some trouble at work, so I put in a lot of effort, massaging and rubbing his shoulders, trying to cheer him up. He forced a smile at me, but it didn't last long before it faded away. He was very silent when we went to bed, holding me, lost in his thoughts. What's wrong with you? I gently rubbed his head and asked softly. He held me tighter and denied, nothing. Really? I didn't believe him. Really? He gave me a good night kiss on the forehead, sleep, good night. I was worried about him, so I didn't sleep well. In the middle of the night, I woke up to see Patton sitting on the bay window with his back to me, his phone screen still lit. Sometimes, a woman's intuition is really accurate. The next morning, while Patton was washing up, I took the chance to check his phone. I saw the message his first love had sent him. I've divorced. Patton didn't reply, but the fact that it made him emotionally unstable and even sleepless, I wouldn't naively think he was unaffected. I knew very well that they had a ten-year history together, and all of Patton's youth was marked by his first love. To expect Patton to have no reaction at all would be too much to ask. I should be more understanding. But at that moment, I still felt a bit uneasy, thinking that I had given Patton all my firsts, first hand-holding, first hug, first kiss. But Patton had already experienced those. All the good things he did for me were learned from his first love. It seems that once we leave our school days behind, everyone we fall in love with carries traces of their exes. But Patton and I were already talking about marriage, and both our parents approved of the match. We were even looking at marital house. I suppressed my bitterness and planned to give Patton some time to deal with this. I was still naive back then. I thought everyone would, as I imagined, settle their previous relationships before entering a new one. So I never considered that Patton and I would break up. But I didn't know that many people move forward while looking back, ending up hurting one person and harming another. Patton wouldn't let me leave, and I didn't want to cause a scene near the company, attracting gossip. So I had no choice but to get into his car. As soon as I sat in the passenger seat, I paused for a moment. I had been in this car for three whole years, and I had personally arranged all the interior decorations. The two smiling doll ornaments by the dashboard were still in their original place. The car air freshener was still the one I liked back then. Even the angle of the passenger seat back was exactly the same as it used to be. I didn't feel nostalgic, just amused. Why do people always start to miss the good in others only after they've lost them? You know Amanda, right? Patton handed me a thick stack of photos, she's back in the country. Oh. As far as I know, Trevor has been getting close to Amanda lately, showing signs of rekindling their old flame. So? What's that got to do with you? Of course it has something to do with me. Patton's emotions suddenly became agitated. If you can forgive Trevor, then why couldn't you forgive me back then? Because my expectations for you were too high back then, so I couldn't accept the fact that you betrayed me. I put away the photos and looked at Patton gently. Do you know? After I got together with you, I never thought about breaking up. 
I loved you, and I firmly believed that you loved me too. Every day I spent with you, I was very happy. I liked your scent, liked the security of being in your arms, liked linking arms with you and walking shoulder to shoulder. My love for you was almost blind. But Patton, you destroyed all my trust and love and marriage. You turned all my perseverance and joy into a joke. Today, if Trevor really cheated, anyone would have the right to stand in front of me and criticize him for hurting me. But you, Patton, you don't have that right. No other man can ever hurt me more than you did. Patton looked at me sorrowfully for a long time, then choked out. But Holly, I never wanted to hurt you. Believe it or not, I really never intended to betray you. Regarding Patton's betrayal, I can now face it calmly. When we broke up, I was very decisive and didn't give him a chance to linger. But I still vividly remember the pain I felt at that time. I couldn't sleep day and night, whenever I closed my eyes, I saw his kindness to me. I started to repeatedly question whether Patton had truly loved me. I overturned all the sweet memories we had together. I even doubted whether everything between us was fake. Did he love me? If he didn't love me, how could he be so attentive, so considerate, so accommodating to me? But if he truly loved me, how could he feel so lost upon hearing the news of his first love's divorce? And even entangle with his first love in our marital home? I blocked all of Patton's contact information, but he still kept sending me messages, explaining, begging for my forgiveness. And I couldn't help but repeatedly check the blacklist, torturing myself by reading those messages and crying. Rationality told me that it was just a breakup, and there are countless things in this world more painful than a breakup. Just a man, I looked good and had a nice figure, I could always find someone better than Patton. But once a person is trapped in obsessive emotions, it's impossible to save oneself. I was trying to pull myself together while still falling deeper. In the end, it was Trevor who saved me. He was Patton's good friend, when Patton and I first started dating, we had dinner together a few times. Later, due to work reasons, Trevor went to develop his career in another city and had just returned recently. When we reunited and exchanged pleasantries, he asked about my current situation and learned about my breakup with Patton. He pondered for a long time and told me that he had just broken up too because his girlfriend wanted to go abroad for better opportunities. Holly, you don't have to worry about whether Patton ever loved you. He definitely loved you. It's just that people's love varies, there's the greatest love, secondary love, and average love. We just happen not to be their first choice. Holly, you have to accept a fact. Sometimes the meaning of true love is to be disappointed. When people are in despair, they always want to grasp something, even if it's just a spider's thread. I didn't dare show my vulnerability in front of others because I was afraid my family and friends would worry. But Trevor had the same experience as me, so I didn't have to pretend to be strong in front of him. With an outlet for my emotions, I found that I could finally stand up and walk out of the shadows. I also started to clean up the mess after the breakup. Patton and I had already reached the point of discussing marriage, the marital home was bought, and both families contributed to the down payment. But now I couldn't stand to even look at that house. So I asked Patton to return my share of the down payment, I didn't want the house. The wedding dress, photography, and hotel we had booked all needed to be cancelled. But before cancelling, Trevor suddenly asked me if I still wanted to get married in this lifetime. Maybe I still will, my parents have a happy marriage, so I've always looked forward to marriage, I always thought it was a necessary part of life. Then would you consider me? I was stunned. The deposits for the hotel and everything are paid, it would be a waste to cancel. Since we both want to get married, why don't we just go through with it? Trevor smiled, lowering his eyes a bit sadly. The wedding ring I bought before is also quite nice, it can't just sit at home gathering dust. Are you serious? I'm serious. Okay, then let's get married. The wedding with Trevor was impulsive, but he truly gave me enough respect. The banquet and wedding arrangements were of the highest standards, and he was sincere in the marital home and dowry. Since marrying him, I have never regretted it for a moment. But if he really wants to reconcile with his ex, I won't stop him. Maybe all men are the same, always nostalgic about their exes. Moreover, Trevor and Patton were good friends back then, so it's inevitable they have common traits. But the human heart is not a fortress. 
Although I have always warned myself that people's hearts change easily. Patton was almost impeccable to me back then, but that didn't stop him from getting entangled with his first love while marrying me. So if one day Trevor no longer wants to be good to me, it's understandable. But women are really too easy to fall. Even though I constantly remind myself not to repeat the same mistake, hearing from Patton about Trevor and Amanda still makes me sad. When I got home, I was surprised to find Trevor already there. The lights were bright, and the dining table was full of delicious dishes. Several gift bags were piled on the coffee table, filled with things I liked but found too expensive to buy often. Trevor, wearing an apron, came out of the kitchen with a plate of fish. When he saw me, his eyes lit up, honey. He put down the plate, wiped his hands, came forward, and kissed me heavily on the face. Happy first anniversary! My feelings were complicated, but I still hugged him obediently, happy anniversary. When I was with Patton, I was also someone who valued rituals. For every big and small event, I always prepared gifts for him. Later, after his betrayal, I realized that rituals only matter between two people who love each other. Otherwise, it's just a one-sided hassle. After marrying Trevor, he thoughtfully prepared a gift for our first Valentine's Day. At the time, I felt at a loss because I thought this was a contract marriage and we shouldn't have high expectations. But Trevor said, although we didn't marry for love, we were both playing our roles as husband and wife well. We greeted the sunrise and sunset together, shared the joys of life and the troubles of work, and strived to live each day well. We are a loving couple, so why can't we celebrate holidays? I agreed with him, so after that, we always prepared gifts for each other on every holiday. Not necessarily expensive, but thoughtful. I glanced again at the gift boxes on the table. Some of them were items I had added to my shopping cart but hesitated to buy due to the price. Others were things I hesitated over while shopping with friends. Trevor's thoughtfulness was evident. Should I trust him once? Just like I trusted Patton back then? Will I be betrayed again? Thinking of this, I was suddenly stunned. Although I always admitted I had feelings for Trevor, I never thought it was love, just two hurt people relying on each other. But if I didn't love him, why was my first reaction fear of being betrayed again? I don't want to repeat the same mistake. The greatest pain I suffered from my failed relationship with Patton wasn't his change of heart, but his deception. People's hearts are too fickle, staying committed is really hard. Promises made in the moment are genuine, but so are the changes that come later. So my only requirement for marriage is honesty. But when it came time to ask, I realized that honesty is really difficult. I'm afraid that Trevor will deceive me, and I'm also afraid that even if he doesn't, I won't be able to trust him anymore. Doubt is like a seed, once it takes root and sprouts, it's hard to remove. Trevor chatted about amusing things at work and occasionally picked food for me. I kept shoveling rice into my mouth, finally mustering the courage to speak, um, oh. By the way, I forgot to tell you something. Trevor said casually, Amanda returned to the country not long ago. I stared at him in surprise, even forgetting to chew. She came to see me, Trevor said, she didn't say it outright, but I understood what she meant. I asked in a daze, and you? I'm already married, that's my answer. Trevor looked at me with a smile, I'm doing very well now, and I don't plan to divorce. I nodded vaguely, stuffing a large mouthful of food to cover my wildly beating heart. And you? Trevor asked me, since we got married, have you ever thought about divorce? No. I could answer this question firmly. I'm very stubborn, I won't turn back until I hit a dead end. Then you can rest assured, Trevor's brows relaxed, there's no dead end in our marriage. That night, after an intense session of lovemaking, Trevor held me in his arms. Our heavy breathing hadn't yet calmed down, and Trevor gently stroked my back. After a long while, he suddenly called me, Holly. M.M.? Let's fall in love. In the darkness, I widened my eyes. I've actually been thinking about it for a long time. Although we agreed not to interfere with each other's lives when we got married, I know you're a devoted person. Once married to me, you wouldn't give your heart to another man. So as long as I stick to my principles, we can live as a peaceful couple for the rest of our lives. But I want you to love me. I want to live in your heart, and I want you to treat me well because I'm important to you, not just because I'm your husband. 
Let's not be a contract couple anymore, okay? From now on, let's love each other seriously, okay? Tears welled up in my eyes, and with a blink, they silently fell. But it seemed Trevor had anticipated this, lowering his head to gently kiss my eyelashes. Okay? I choked out, okay. I know people's hearts are fickle, and the world is unpredictable. What is true today may be false tomorrow. Trevor and Patton have so many similarities, and I'm afraid that in the end, my fate with Trevor will be the same as it was with Patton. But at this moment, I just want to say yes to him. My life has started to change in new ways. It's really strange because I was doing pretty well before. Trevor has always been very considerate towards me, but after we confessed our feelings to each other, it felt like the world was previously covered with a thin veil. Although it was beautiful, when the veil was lifted, I realized that this world could be even more beautiful. In such a good mood, Patton came to see me again. I could hardly suppress the impatience on my face. Patton has never been the type to pester someone. When he and his first love were forced to part ways back then, he graciously gave his blessings. I would not narcissistically think that in Patton's heart, I would be more important than his first love. Why do you keep bothering me over and over again? Just say what you want. Patton forced a smile, I just wanted to tell you, I really didn't betray you back then. I almost laughed out of anger at these words. Patton, I have eyes to see and a mouth to ask questions. Come to think of it, some things are really destined. That day, it was a completely spontaneous decision to check out the marital home. After work, a salesperson gave me a flyer about renovations and enthusiastically introduced it to me. Originally, the renovation of the marital home hadn't been scheduled, but the salesperson was quite persuasive, so I decided to take her to have a look. As a result, I stumbled upon the scene of Patton entangled with his first love. I didn't turn around and leave, nor did I interrupt immediately. I just stood at the door watching for more than three minutes, until even the saleslady started to feel awkward. It was his first love who noticed me first. At the first sight of me, the confusion and passion on her face turned into a pale fear. At that moment, I wondered, how scary do I look? I don't eat people. You guys tidy up first. I even considerately closed the door. Even at that point, I still held on to some hope, hoping Patton would give me an explanation. Even if the explanation was weak, as long as he said it, I was willing to listen. But after waiting for a while, Patton opened the door and looked at me, remaining silent. Aren't you going to explain? I was about to break into sobs, yet I forced a smile to give him a chance. Sorry, I just, I don't know what happened. Patton clutched his head in pain. So, you're saying you can't explain, right? I finally burst into tears, Patton, what do you take me for? We're about to get married. This is our marital home. I could accept that Patton still loved his first love. I could accept that between me and his first love, I was not the one chosen. I could even accept Patton taking his first love to a hotel. But why, why at this moment? This place? He shattered my love and even my soul and dignity along with it. But now, Patton tells me that it was all fake, a misunderstanding. I got into Patton's car and watched as he laid out all the evidence in front of me. Looking at me, he told me, word by word, that he did not cheat. From beginning to end, he never thought about rekindling his first love. He admitted that he did feel some pity for his first love because she got divorced due to domestic violence. They had a 10-year relationship, and although they didn't end up as partners, they remained friends. So when his first love asked him to help check out a rental house, he agreed. It was just a coincidence that the rental house was in the same neighborhood as our marital home. His first love mentioned wanting to see the marital home, and Patton hesitated for a moment, but since it was on the way, he agreed. But he didn't quite remember what happened afterward. He didn't even remember how he ended up holding his first love. At the time, he thought he had made a mistake, so he was too ashamed to ask for my forgiveness. But not long ago, he discovered that the reason he lost control that day was because of a bad smell. He had always thought it was the scent of his first love's perfume. I asked him, how did you find out? It's been so long. A friend's bar opened, and I went there for a bit and smelled that scent. Patton explained quickly, I really just made an appearance and then left. 
In fact, I didn't care whether he went to the bar or went home now. He didn't need to explain to me anymore. I mentioned in passing that the scent made me dizzy, and my friend told me that it wasn't perfume. Smelling too much of it could make someone lose control. So Holly, I really didn't betray you. I truly love you, I truly wanted to marry you, and since being with you, I've never thought about any other woman. Looking at Patton's anxious expression, my heart wavered slightly but quickly returned to calm. Patton, I'm sorry, but I can't empathize with your feelings right now. Patton's expression went blank for a second. You might care a lot about whether what happened back then was a misunderstanding and want to prove your innocence. Yes, I accept your explanation. I'm sorry I misunderstood you back then. I apologize. But I'm already married. I raised my hand to show him the wedding ring on my ring finger. Speaking of which, Trevor once joked that this wedding ring was probably made for me because it fits my finger so perfectly. But you and Trevor, you got married impulsively back then, you don't truly love each other. But my husband now is Trevor. I can go explain to him, Patton said as he frantically picked up his phone. If he wants money, a house, whatever he wants, I can give it to him. I won't divorce him. I looked at Patton, word by word, firmly. Patton stared at me, stunned, with an expression of deep sorrow. Holly, you said you would marry me, you said you would love me forever. I did say that. But I'm sorry, Patton, I broke my promise. I said softly, I fell in love with Trevor. Now, I only want to spend my life with him. Patton started to tremble all over. I couldn't bear to look at him anymore and turned my head away. Even if the incident back then was a misunderstanding, I now only love Trevor, and I won't respond to Patton's expectations anymore. Knock knock. I turned around to see Trevor standing by the car, bending over, smiling at me. I had already told Trevor that Patton came to see me. I didn't want Patton to cause any rift between Trevor and me. Long time no see. Trevor opened the car door for me with his usual expression and greeted Patton. He didn't mind the lingering sadness on Patton's face at all. We were just. I wanted to explain, but Trevor just shook his head. He held my hand, gently rubbing it with his thumb, and politely nodded to Patton. No need to catch up. I hope you don't come to disturb my wife again in the future. Patton didn't glare at Trevor or say anything. Trevor pulled me away and we turned to leave. Do you really not want me to explain? I looked up and asked him softly. Of course I do, but I don't want to show weakness in front of Patton. Trevor snorted softly. When we get home, you must tell me everything you talked about with Patton, not missing a single word, got it? I laughed and nodded vigorously, okay. I remembered how Trevor used to subtly ask about my male colleagues. I thought he was just curious at the time. Looking back, it was probably jealousy, not curiosity. There was no movement behind us, and I suppressed the urge to look back, following Trevor's steps forward. I don't want to walk forward while looking back, only by not being stuck in the past can one have a future. I'm glad I never loved the wrong person, and even more glad that after being hurt, I still had the courage to start a new life. Patton, goodbye. But ideally, it's goodbye forever. Patton's extra story. When Patton first started dating Holly, it was indeed to appease his parents. Holly was an ideal marriage partner. She had good looks, a gentle personality, a stable job, and open-minded parents. Being with her, even if he didn't love her, life wouldn't be too hard to bear. Everything he did for Holly was actually out of habit. Having been with his first love for 10 years, he was used to taking care of her daily needs. When he applied these habits to Holly, he quickly received Holly's sincere response. He knew clearly that she loved him. Loved him very, very much. When she looked at him, there were beautiful stars in her eyes. He was very busy with work. He and his first love broke up because of financial reasons, and he always had a drive to succeed. But Holly never said anything, she just learned many ways to try to make him feel better after a hangover. Gradually, from often thinking about his first love at the beginning, he rarely thought about her later. He cleaned out his heart, intending to leave all the space for Holly. Both parents were very satisfied with the marriage, so their wedding was put on the agenda. 
Then, he received a message from his first love, who hadn't contacted him for a long time. I got divorced. To say he felt nothing would be a lie. But these feelings never shook his determination to marry Holly. It was only later when he learned that his first love's divorce was due to domestic violence that Patton felt even more sympathy for her. Back then, when they were together, his first love was also a bright and cheerful girl. But in just three short years, life had worn away all her edges. His first love called him, tearfully complaining about her grievances over the years, saying she had never forgotten him. Patton could only comfort her. He was now in a decent financial position, and his first love was struggling financially due to the divorce, so he voluntarily helped. His first love mentioned she wanted his help to rent a place together, saying the agent was a man. And because of the domestic violence, she now had a strong guard against men and only trusted him. Patton went with her. But when explaining his late return to Holly, he lied, saying he was working overtime. He felt a twinge of guilt, but he really didn't want any complications before the wedding. He was worried Holly would overthink it. He thought, as long as his first love found a place and settled down to start a new life, the rest would have nothing to do with him. He focused on preparing for the wedding and starting a new life with Holly. But he didn't expect that he would no longer have a new life. His first love used the excuse of wanting to see his marital home and then went to the bathroom. When she came out, there was a strange fragrance on her. The scent made Patton feel a bit dizzy. The rest of the events, he had no recollection of. When he regained consciousness, he and his first love were in each other's arms, clothes disheveled. And Holly was standing at the door, eyes wide open, quietly watching him. At that moment, Patton finally understood what it meant to be utterly devastated. He wanted to beg for Holly's forgiveness but didn't even know how to start explaining. He could only repeatedly beg Holly not to break up, promising he would never make any mistakes again. He continually analyzed his love for Holly, but it could never bring Holly back. In the end, he learned that Holly was about to marry Trevor. That electronic wedding invitation was sent to him by their mutual friend. He just opened it and took a glance, then lost his mind and called Trevor, demanding to meet. Trevor seemed to have been prepared and agreed on a meeting place and time. As soon as they met, they started fighting. I treated you like a brother. What did you take me for? Holly is my girlfriend. The person she is supposed to marry is me. Patton roared, throwing punch after punch without holding back. Haven't you heard, friends' wives are off limits? Trevor tilted his head to dodge his punches and landed a left hook on Patton. Patton, it was you who didn't cherish her. Holly is my wife now. It's my turn to say this to you, friends' wives are off limits. Patton fell to the ground in a mess. He panted heavily, looking at Trevor's expression, suddenly understanding something. But he didn't dare admit it. He would rather accept that Trevor married Holly out of convenience than accept the fact that Trevor might have long been deeply in love with Holly. That way, at least he and Holly would still have a chance. Trevor. Patton stood up with difficulty, hunched over, and looked at him in pain. Can you give Holly back to me, please? Don't marry her. She promised to be my bride. Trevor looked down at him from above. Patton, it was your failure to cherish her that gave me the opportunity. For that, I should indeed thank you. Patton looked at him, unable to hold back the taste of blood in his throat. He knew very well that Trevor would never let go. On the wedding day, Patton did not attend. He knew he loved Holly, but he could never distinguish the difference between his love for Holly and his first love. But on this day, he understood. He drove his car, silently following the wedding cars all the way. He kept thinking, how could the groom sitting in the main wedding car be Trevor? It should be him. At the grand wedding venue, he used his connection with the hotel manager to secretly hide in an empty VIP room on the second floor and watched the entire wedding. He watched Holly's gentle smile as she looked into Trevor's eyes, holding hands, hugging, and kissing. He neurotically bit his fingers, thinking again, no, this isn't right. The person who should be marrying Holly is him. He even had the impulse to set a fire and burn down the entire wedding venue. How could Trevor smile so happily? He is a thief, a robber. He took everything from him, he should die a horrible death. 
He hid in the darkness, his eyes filled with malice as he watched everything. But at some moment, he suddenly met Holly's gaze as she looked up. Like being burned by fire, Patton hastily withdrew his gaze, completely hiding himself in the darkness. The room was silent, only his heart pounded like thunder. He fantasized that Holly would rush up, push open the box door, hug him, and cry, telling him she wasn't going to marry, she still wanted to marry him. In a daze, he already saw that scene. A faint smile appeared on Patton's face as he slowly took out a ring from the pocket on his chest. It was a woman's ring, it didn't fit his ring finger. So he wore it on his pinky, carefully examining it in the faint light coming through the thick curtains. This was their wedding ring, how beautiful it was. He lowered his head, closed his eyes, and kissed the ring. He kissed it so devoutly. But the tear that slid from the corner of his eye fell on the ring. In the end, it still shattered. Trevor's extra story. Trevor had a secret. He fell in love with Holly at first sight. He was a rational and self-disciplined person. For over 20 years, he had met women he admired, but it never went beyond admiration. However, the first time he saw Holly, he clearly heard his own heartbeat, deafeningly loud. It was as if a small seed stubbornly took root and sprouted in his heart, blooming brilliantly. His feelings for her came so recklessly yet untimely. Holly was Patton's girlfriend. Her love for Patton was so obvious that everyone present could see it at a glance. After the dinner, some friends teased Patton in the group chat, saying he was lucky to have such a beautiful girlfriend. Someone even asked Patton if he still had feelings for his first love. Patton was candid with these friends, saying he indeed found it hard to forget his first love. But Holly was very suitable for marriage, and he would take her seriously. At that moment, Trevor clearly felt a faint malice welling up in his heart. Later, he saw Holly two more times. They hardly exchanged words. Holly only regarded him as Patton's good friend, nodding, smiling, and chatting briefly when they met. Their most intimate moment was when they sat at the same round table, and as Holly stood up, the hem of her skirt brushed his shoulder. He smelled the faint fragrance on her. Desire surged, and Trevor clenched his fists in restraint. He realized he couldn't stay in the city any longer. So, he chose to develop his career elsewhere. Work kept him busy, and he didn't have much time to think about Holly. But sometimes, in the middle of the night, Holly's laughter would echo in his ears. There were always excellent women around him, women who showed their love for him. Given his age, he started trying to let go of his delusions and attempted a new life with one of these women. He sometimes wondered if everyone followed the same trajectory, starting school at 6, graduating at 20, and getting married at 30. He couldn't say if it was happiness, but it seemed everyone went through life this way. Perhaps life is like that, no one is lucky enough to live without any regrets. But before Trevor could formally propose a relationship, the woman had found a better opportunity and wanted to go abroad. He simply let go and wished her the best. Maybe he was still meant to be alone, Trevor thought. But just then, he heard from an old friend that Patton's first love had divorced. The dark thoughts he had suppressed surged like a beast unleashed. In the middle of the night, a beast in his heart kept tempting him. He had the ability, the skills, and the means. He could do many bad things and ensure no one would ever find out. For example, he could use Patton's first love as a pretext to completely ruin Patton and Holly's relationship. But he always thought of Holly's eyes. Whenever she looked at him, she always smiled, her pupils filled with bright stars. Such eyes shouldn't hold any sadness. He tried hard to suppress his dark side, even falsely wishing Patton happiness. But one day, he heard that Patton and Holly had broken up. Patton said it was just an accident. But Trevor thought, men understand each other, don't they? If you really loved her, how could you tolerate such an accident? He quickly applied for a transfer and returned to the city he had missed for so long. He hadn't thought much about it, he just wanted to be closer to Holly. Maybe, just maybe, if he had the slightest chance. He wouldn't let go. He secretly observed Holly for a long time. He watched her move, watched her leave for work on time every day, take the subway, and go to the supermarket alone after work. He watched her grow thinner. He watched her crouch on the bustling street, crying silently. His heart ached. Trevor didn't understand. Holly was such a good girl. How could Patton bear to hurt her? 
If Patton wasn't good to her, then let him be. So, in the supermarket, Trevor orchestrated a carefully planned encounter. Perhaps Holly would never know. What she thought was a coincidental reunion was actually the prelude to Trevor's love, so deep it hurt his bones. Holly, give me a chance. I will treat you well. For a lifetime.